Hey everyone. So I recently began shooting a documentary and typically they involve a lot of interviews that have to be sifted through in order to find the best sound bites that convey the story that you want to tell. Now, usually this takes a lot of time and note taking, but recently Black Magic Design added an audio transcription feature to the studio version of Resolve. Now, this is not a new feature. It's been out for a while now, but I want you to see how I'm using it and why this feature should not be overlooked. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to use it. So depending on how you like to work, each method will offer different benefits. Also, I just released the 18.5 update to my popular DaVinci Resolve core training. Check it out using the link below. Let's get into this. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. I've imported an interview clip of my subject. According to the metadata panel, the clip's duration is 18 minutes long. I've also created an empty HD timeline that matches the clip's frame rate and resolution. To transcribe the clip, I'll select it, then click the Transcribe Audio button. A window appears that gives me a time estimation of the analysis and process. On my M1 MacBook Pro, this 18-minute clip took 45 seconds. Once completed, a floating transcription window appears. You can resize it and place it anywhere on your screen that's convenient. You can also drag it to a display or an iPad, which I find useful. Clicking on any word in the text moves the playhead to that exact location in the viewer. Press the spacebar to play from there. Uh, I left home and walked all the way and I found them where, where my grandmother was living. And so I mentioned that there are various ways to use this tool depending on the type of video you're editing. For this first method, let's say I'm cutting a long form documentary and I want to create a tight string out of just the questions and answers. In a long interview like this, there will typically be a lot of silence between questions. These silent areas are represented by the ellipsis symbols that separate each sentence and paragraph. Also, if the subject pauses quite a bit, those areas will be flagged as silence as well. You can save yourself a lot of time if you remove the silent sections so that you end up with just the meat of the interview. In the upper right of the window, click the button and choose Remove Silent Portions. The ellipses will now appear with a strike through. Now the easy part. Press Command A to select all the text and click the Insert button. The clips are added to the timeline in order and without silent gaps. I'll play back a section of the timeline so you can hear the result. Family, I'd like to hear a little bit about your, your backstory. I grew up back in the day, of course, Steve, when there was like two, two three families in one home. Uh, so I grew up with uh, aunt, a grandmother, a mother, uh, all in the same. My, brother, my cousins were like brothers to me. They were older, but because I was the only child for 11 years. So um, my cousins were more like my brothers. And then... Uh, so let's look at another way to use this window that's better suited for long form video editing where you need a more disciplined approach to breaking down your content. Editors will often deal with long clips by turning them into a series of smaller clips called subclips. In a long interview like this, perhaps I'm only interested in a specific topic being discussed. Milton, my interview subject, spends a great deal of time talking about his childhood school experience, so I want to create subclips where he's just talking about that. In the search field, I'll enter school. Anytime he mentions school, that word will appear highlighted in the text. I'll play a few of these. The other thing that I remember uh, about that uh, area, I went to, to this school was called Lindbergh uh, Elementary School. And uh, both of my cousins were already in school. I'll create a subclip where he mentions the name of his elementary school by dragging out a selection that encloses the sentence. When you make a selection, what you're really doing is creating in and out points around that section. To play the selection, click this button. I went to, to this school it's called Lindbergh uh, Elementary School. There are two buttons in the lower left corner. One is for creating a subclip from the selection and the other is for creating an extended marker. But here's a tip. Extended markers in Resolve are really just subclips, as you'll see in a moment. I'll click the button and a marker range is created in the scrubber bar below the viewer. I'll create another selection range over his comment about him walking to school by himself. I'll click the marker button again to create another extended marker. 
In the media pool, I'll locate the clip. Clips that have been transcribed appear with a badge on the thumbnail. Change the view to list view. If you don't see the markers, click the disclosure triangle to reveal them. Double clicking the marker moves the playhead to the start of the selection range. Press the spacebar to play. I went to, to this school it's called Lindbergh uh, Elementary School. And I'll double click the second marker and play that one. I would walk to school with them. Sometimes I'd walk there by myself and walk into the class. I was going to school before I was even old enough because the teacher liked me. In the metadata panel, you can give your extended markers a name. I'll select the first marker, then in the name field, enter Lindbergh Elementary. I'll do the same for the second marker by selecting it, then entering Walk to School for that name. Now let me show you why these are functionally subclips and not just markers. I'll select them both and drag them into the timeline. When played back, it's just the two portions of the longer interview clip. I went to, to this school it's called Lindbergh uh, Elementary School. I would walk to school with them. Sometimes I'd walk there by myself. In other words, I've just edited subclips into the timeline. The third method for using audio transcription, and probably the one that's gotten the most press, is text-based editing. Now, I place this last in my order priority, not because it's not useful, but because I still prefer doing my editing in the timeline after I've broken my interview into subclips. But I do see this as a useful tool when I have to cut down a short TikTok or Instagram video, and I just want to create a quick story around a few catchphrases. Again, this is how I would use the tool. I'll start by entering music as a search term. I'll drag out a section around his comment that there's always music in the home, then press the Insert button to add that selection to the timeline at the current playhead location. I'll select the next sentence, and this time I'll append that selection to the end of the first clip. I'll skip the next line and select the line about gospel music, append that, then select the next three lines about the specific gospel performers who inspired him growing up. Let's play that back to hear the edit. Actually, there was always music in the home, Steve. Back then, we called them 78 records. We could play the records, and it was a, a, a real... Uh... It's all there, it just needs some work at each edit point. I'll press T to bring up the Trim Edit Mode tool, then ripple trim the heads and tails to give him some breathing room. And play that back. Actually, there was always music in the home, Steve. Back then, we called them 78 records. Uh, we could play the records, and it was a, a, a real uh, varied collection, you know, because there was some gospel. There was Mahalia Jackson. There was some gospel. There was Mahalia Jackson, Rosetta Thorpe. These were gospel singers. And then uh, at the bottom of the record pile would be Count Basie. So what do you think? Have you used this feature? Have you used this feature in another NLE? How does it compare? Leave your comments below and thanks for watching.